Knuckle Fighting Championship is brought to you by Bucked Up Energy Drink. Welcome to Columbia, South Carolina, the capital city, where tonight the athletes of the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship take over the Palmetto State once again. And the free view starts right now. Two bare knuckle bouts to kick off tonight's loaded card, setting the tone for the entire night of bare knuckle fighting. Later on in the pay per view, a war in the lightweight division, undefeated Beast battle to be next up for a championship bout. The bombastic Kevin Kroon and the King Tony Loco Soto. And the main event, the educated hands of our bantamweight champion have been dishing out lessons, but nobody has risen faster than the former Marine Keith, the rock star Richardson. Can the Carolina boy take the title home to Rock Hill, or does Reggie Barnett keep on teaching tonight? And welcome to the Colonial Life Arena here in Columbia, South Carolina, home of the South Carolina Gamecocks, where we have an incredible night of fights for you tonight. We are back in South CAC. That being said, you are locked in right here on the free view. A couple of free fights kind of give you a taste, and that's where we rope you in and get you for the full main card pay per view. All you got to do is get the BKFC app. It's $7.99 for this event, and you're going to get three more events included. All those international events, you're going to get that just for that $7.99. I repeat, the best value in all of combat sports is the BKFC app. We get the entire night, including our championship main event. That is a lot to be excited about. And I think we got the bare knuckle show with Brian Sosha too. So we got we to give him a plug too. Brian Sosha always needs a plug, right? So folks, what a night it is going to be. Of course, we talk about that championship main event. But right now, before we get things cracking, let's send it down to our incredible commentary team, Sean Wheelock and Chris Lytle. Sean, incredible November. Look at all these events. They're all in different countries, four countries, all in the month of November. You know, Dave Feldman wanted to go international. I think that's about as international as it gets. Cyrus, Friday, November 17th, we will make our BKFC debut in Bulgaria. We will be in Sofia. And as we just saw in November, historic for Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship shows in the U.S., the U.K., the aforementioned Bulgaria, as well as Thailand. John, I'm really excited about Bulgaria, one of the greatest countries for fighting. You know, all that area is so good right there. Some of the best fighters in the world. I know we had trials out there, and they said usually we get, you know, five, six, eight good fighters from trials. They said we had 70. I mean, unbelievable reason. Those guys are going to come to fight. They're going to really be want to take over BKFC. Oh, you hit it right on the head because you talk about the striking, and in Eastern Europe, that's where they've been doing it in a big way for a very, very long time. So excited to see their debut here in BKFC. But what about Thailand? Thailand is a very, very special night, November 4th. And of course, that incredible main event that has anybody combat sport fans mouth watering. You're talking about Bukau, you're talking about Senchai and bare knuckle Thai rules. Wow. Bukau and Senchai, not just two of the greatest Muay Thai fighters in the history of that sport, two of the most famous humans <laughs> in Thailand right now. These are absolute mega stars, transcending Muay Thai, transcending combat sports, transcending sports into the full pop culture. This is historic. They have never fought before. Now they will fight in BKFC, Chris, in these modified rules. And I like what Dave Feldman did. He made the rules more entertaining. He made it where there's only a few seconds to be able to clinch, elbows, knees. It's going to be a great fight, but uh, just make it as exciting as possible. I love it. Well, at this point, I mean, where aren't we going to go, Sean? You know, Feldman has taken us to all these different continents just in this month. What could be next? Could it be down under in Australia? Could it be in Africa? We know so many great fighters are coming out of the African continent. Where next here for BKFC? Yeah, I think all of the above, Cyrus. Literally, as you look, possibly South America, possibly Australia, certainly more into Europe as we go into Asia, talks of the Middle East. And as we look internally in the United States, more state athletic commissions now welcoming in BKFC. You will see a number of new major states coming online for Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship in 2024. And Sean, as long as we don't go to Antarctica, I don't, I don't want to go. <laughs> Snow, ice, I'm out. I don't know, man. I want to cross that one off my list. You know, there's a couple of scientists down there that have beef that want to settle it. I say we make it happen, and I hit all seven continents. That being said, guys, what a night it's going to be. Let's talk about what you're going to see here at BKFC 52. 
Reggie Barnett has been so dominant the way he is picking his opponents apart, dismissing his challengers. But Keith Richardson, there's something special about this guy. And in 2023, it has been the year of the rock star. Cyrus, you just mentioned this is BKFC 52. We go back to BKFC 1. Reggie Barnett on that card, defeating Travis Thompson. Reggie Barnett has since emerged, not only is the champion of Bare Knuckle Fighting Championships under 35 pound division, truly one of the absolute pound for pound best in the entire sport. Keith Richardson, a great run in MMA, 34 pro mixed martial arts bouts. And Chris, now he enters our main event as the 3-0 challenger. Reggie Educated Hands is his nickname, and it's like that for a reason. He's came out and he's made this his own sport. He's went through, he's broken down everything and said, why this works, why does I just sit there and talk to him. It's, it's amazing how he's educated on what's going on here, and that's why he's been able to be so victorious right there. He keeps his range, he keeps his distance. However, he's going up against a beast. Richardson has been phenomenal. He can bully you, he can push you around, he can, he can win a war, or he can win with knockout. It's going to be a great fight, Sean. Uh, such a big moment there for Richardson, the biggest moment of his combat sports career. Could he win a world championship tonight in his home state? We'll find out here in our main event of BKFC 52. Of course, if you want to make things a little bit more interesting, our folks at DraftKings can help you do that. But Chris, when you take a look at the odds, there has to be something sticking out here, something some of these betters can take advantage of. I mean, there's always so many great fights. If you really study, you understand this. The one that jumps out at me, you know, Uzmanov, he's a striking coach. He's very good. He's very dominant. Minus 130, that's a great bet, in my opinion. All right, well, let's talk about getting those bets in. DraftKings has got you covered. You get a $50 bonus bet courtesy of DraftKings with your first deposit of $5 or more. All you got to do is scan that QR code right there on your screen. Do it right now. Then put in the promo code DKBKFC, and you are off and running. Now let's take a look at the rules brought to you by Mint 45. All fights scheduled for five two-minute rounds. Fights are scored by three judges on the 10-point must system. Hand rounds must be at least one inch below the bare knuckles. Punching in the clinch is allowed. No three knockdown rule. No being saved by the bell in any round. Of course, no knees, kicks, elbows, takedowns, or submissions. And now let's go to our first Crescent Tools. Tell the tape. We open tonight here in South Carolina with about in the lightweight division. Trevor Loken versus Bessad Usmanov. And you can see here, Sean, Loken does have a three inch height advantage, but it's that five and a half inch reach advantage that I think is going to be the biggest key right there. Uzmanov needs to get inside to land those shots. It's up to Loken to keep him away. BKFC 52, our third time in South Carolina, our debut in Columbia. We're on the campus of the University of South Carolina Colonial Life Arena. And bout number one of 10 is upon us. Tezad Usmanov from Tajikistan and Central Asia, now based in the American Southwest in Albuquerque, New Mexico. This is Usmanov's second fight in BKFC. Usmanov 39 and 5 in pro Muay Thai, 12 and 4 in pro MMA. He's also had three pro boxing bouts. Usmanov is an extremely smart fighter. He's an extremely studious fighter. And to the surprise of no one, very clear eyed in our fighter meeting, Usmanov said, I'm going to continually read my opponent and continually make adjustments as this fight progresses. One thing he said that he didn't fully understand the clinch the first time he fought. Understands that way better now. Once they get in there, utilize it. He feels like he has a lot of angles in there, a lot of things he can do from the clinch he's going to do this time. Trevor Loken made his BKFC debut January of this year. He defeated Marcus Bramage by first round knockout. And you can see right here a very hard style to fight when you come against Bramage, just coming in with hot angles. But Loken did not care. He came with a lot of straight forward, straight hard punches. And that's what he does Well, he comes in. This guy's all offense. He's focused on coming in and doing damage. You look at this, throwing caution to the wind right there, throwing hard punches the entire time. And when he lands these shots, he's going to hurt you. That's his game plan right now. He's already told us he wants to come in there, land hard shots, come straight forward, bring the fight to his opponent. And when he does that and when he lands, he does a great job.
This is bout number three in BKFC for Trevor Loken. Had a good run as an AMI and MMA where he went 5-0. and oh. And our fighter being Loken, who just like Usmanov is a very cerebral fighter, very well spoken, said, I've really been focusing on my defense, focusing on my movement. But with that said, Loken told us, I'm still going to go hard for the knockout. Yeah, he said he wants to do everything similar with that coming straight for. However, he wants to tighten up his technique, keep the hands blocking the entire time, making sure the chin's not open. It just takes one mistake right here. He's figured it out. He's going to try and correct those mistakes and be perfect out there. Loken said, I have absolutely no interest in going the distance. I'm not going to be reckless, but when I see chances to go hard for the finish, I'm going to take full advantage of those chances. And he understands he has a little bit of a reach advantage. He wants to stay just outside his opponent's range. We can just land at the end of his shots. He's got that five and a half inch reach. He wants to stay right there. To get us started, we send it to the always outstanding Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you, and we welcome you one and all to the Colonial Life Arena here in beautiful Columbia, South Carolina. And welcome to BKFC 52. BKFC Freeview begins tonight with five two-minute rounds in the lightweight division, presented to you by Bucked Up Energy Drink. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner, tonight he wears blue. He stands five feet seven inches tall. His official weight, 149.4 pounds. Tonight, he steps into the squared circle for the second time, fighting out of Albuquerque, New Mexico, by way of Kujan Tajikistan. Here is Bexod, the Lion, Usmanov. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears white. He stands 5 feet 10 inches tall. His official weight, an identical 149.4 pounds. His BKFC record stands at one victory opposite a single defeat. Fighting out of Raleigh. North Carolina, here is Trevor Logan. And our referee in charge of the action, Andrew Glenn. As Usmanov told us, I have to keep moving. My key to victory is to continually take away time and space from Trevor Logan. Round number one. Supporting touch of hands, right to it off the jab, goes the North Carolinian, Trevor Loken. He's in the white trunks. The fighter from Tajikistan, Bezad Usmanov in the blue trunks. Usmanov on the outside. Loken looking to come to the inside. Big overhand right from Usmanov. To the half-time club, right hand on the exit from Usmanov. Just like I thought this fight would be easy ever coming right at each other. Big swings from both fighters. Loken now opening up with the right hand. Rear right uppercut, another one from Trevor Loken. Loken to the inside, counter. From Bezad Usmanov. That did some damage right there. Logan, all oh, his wrist, knees buckled his a little bit right there. To the clinch. The fighters trying to snatch half tie plum. Hard Watch right hand guys. to the Watch body from Usmanov. Looking on this separation. Something Usmanov said he really wanted to do. Start targeting that body, and that'll drop the hands, and then he can go upstairs. Heavy feints from both fighters on the step in. Left hand, rear right uppercut from Logan. Overhand right from Usmanov. Loken now coming forward. Loken hard off the jab. Usmanov circling on the outside. Overhand right, left hand on the entry from Usmanov. And Loken's doing a great job of throwing those straight punches, those jabs, hey, and doing hey, some damage. I think back, he cut back, his please. opponent open with that. 45 seconds Come remaining, on. a phenomenal round number one. Both fighters having their moments here in the first round of this, are opening bout. BKFC 52 now, Usmanov coming forward. There's the straight one-two from Loken. Usmanov circling out. Loken doing a great job of using that range. That one-two is landing very well. On the reset, again, you see the heavy feint. Overhand right, overhand left, just off the mark from Bezad Usmanov. Long jab just off the mark from Loken. You see the blood around the left eye of Usmanov. Final seconds, round number one. Usmanov on the entry, overhand left. Right, right. Clinch. Step back. Both fighters definitely understand Nicole. wrestling. They understand grappling, in fighting at a high level. That ends round number one. And Sean, this is one of those fights where you can tell both guys 
have gotten their feet wet. They learned a little bit about this sport. They're both leveling up in this fight. You can see they are much better than the last time we saw them. Both guys. Good run. You have them cut, okay? In for that cut. Time his shots. You're doing good. When you're crowding and rushing in, you're eating shots, okay? Keep that little bit of that distance. Time him, okay? Time those shots. He's loading up that right hand. You're seeing him. You're landing good. That's how you cut him up, okay? You got to time that right hand. When you're rushing in, get your hands up. When you're on that clinch, stay on the clinch. You landed good shots on the clinch, too. On that mid-range, you've got to keep your hands up, okay? That's it. You just got to keep your hands up. He's cut really bad in his eye. we got to target that eye, okay? okay? Keep your fucking hands up. Keep your distance in and out he and time okay. that shot. Here's some of that good That's what you're doing. Good work on the inside. Both guys landing hard shots on okay. the inside. Just like you said in the back, it's there. It's good there. overhand right. Those right. are the one I think yeah, that, that Logan, he didn't really see right. it coming. It kind of buckled him for a second, but he recovered well. Wasn't hurt bad. It just knocked him off bounce. But both right, these guys, like I said, are, are much improved from the last time we saw them. If there's such a term as cerebral brawler, it would apply to both Trevor Loken and Bezad Usmanov. Round number two, long jab from Loken. These are two tenacious and technical fighters. And, and Loken doing a good job of using his range and his reach, and that's what he does best, and he needs to stay right there. So he's using the one, two. It's done a lot of damage so far. Smart off good left hand counter right hand from Loken. Jab to the sternum from Trevor Loken. Jab again. Overhand right, left hand again. Usmanov looking for that Chris. It's that overhand right and the overhand left or left hook on the entry. We definitely talked about his opponent drops that right hand. If he drops that right hand, he's going to get in with that left hook. It's going to hurt him. 115 remaining, round number two of this lightweight bout. And you see the smear of blood under the left eye of Usmanov. That cut opening in round number one. Jab to the sternum again for Loken. Overhand right, there's the left hand again from Usmanov. That time went overhand left. Good head movement from Usmanov. You can see Usmanov is continuing to try to land that left hook. He targeted that because he saw his opponent dropped it in the past, and you can work on that, but it's really hard to change those, those habits you have. Long straight punches, big shots now from the mid-range for Loken. Usmanov circling out, reloads with an overhand right and another one. Both fighters continue to land big. Both continue to have their moments. Stocking pressure, though, for Loken. Took those shots well from Usmanov. 30 seconds remaining, round number two. Hand right back. One, two again. Counter left, counter right from Usmanov. Usmanov entry right, right hand right back from Loken. Loken now on the one, two into the clinch. To the body goes Trevor Loken. From the half tie plug. Like an arm drag from Usmanov. Left hand, right hand, big swings. Loken. Oh, oh. Looking to his feet, taking the mandatory eight from Andrew Glenn, and that ends round number two. And Loken is in big trouble right there. He's lucky that that round ended. He was out on his feet right there. I think it was just a matter of time. You see massive swelling around and under Loken's left eye. So that, that was a round right there where you can see both those guys, they're doing what they want. You know, it, it's not a fight where somebody's doing something wrong. They're both doing very well. It's just Loken got caught right there at the end. They were both having very good moments in that round. You can see right here just a couple hard shots off balance, and right now he's in trouble. You can just tell it's just a jab that knocked him down. I'm sure if Usmanov was going for the... MMA finish right there, just a couple hard shots right there that knocked him off balance. Hits that one to the neck sometimes, it really does damage. Now, Loken, he, he's got some, some bad swelling okay, listen, guys. over Good that left job, eye. Right? Don't hit him on the ground, man. You're going to mess everything up. Don't hit him on the ground. Let's see if they let the fight keep going. I think they, they think they will. Chris, quite possibly, that was going to be a 10-9 round two for Trevor Loken instead. With that knockdown on the jab, movement, it's a like most a likely 10-8 round number two for Bezad Usmanov. Like I said, both guys had their moments in that round. They were both doing some things okay. very well. Here we go, gentlemen, total line. Round three. It's been step a great back fight over here. so step far. Back over here. So the total sportsmanship, line. the respect line. continues. Knuckle up! Fighters back up to scratch. Knuckle up from referee Andrew Glenn. Round number three. Yeah. It's those overhand looping shots that are doing the damage to Logan right there. He's got to keep those hands up. Logan to the body counter right hand on the straight right hand from Usmanov. Logan is tough as nails, man. He's getting hit with some bombs right here. Big shots. Oh. Right hook to the body. Downward right hand. More big shots. And that is it. The standing TKO. And win number one in BKFC for Bezad Usmanov.
man, that was a great stoppage right there because Logan was hurt bad. He's just too tough for his own good, Sean. He was taking massive shots right there. And you can just see the disappointment in Logan right there because he had such great moments against a high-level guy. He was doing very well. Just got caught with a couple shots that did damage. But like I said, he's being too tough wouldn't go to the ground. Look, coming straight forward, and he's eating these shots. But just doing so, he, like I said, tough as nails, but you can only take so many of them. And that body right there, those body shots really did some damage. He had some good defense right there, but this isn't boxing, Sean. You can't sit there and block with those gloves because guess what? There's no gloves. Those little shots get through. But right there, that shot, that'd be blocked in boxing. It's not blocked here. That's a, that's a great way to start tonight. So that, that was a high level, like you talked about, technical ball. That's what you talked about. You could see that Trevor Loken was disappointed on the standing TKO on the decision, the stoppage from referee Andrew Glenn, but he never argued with Glenn. That's very telling, Chris. I mean, you can't really argue. He knew he was hurt. He want, he, you could just say how bad he wanted to win. He, and it makes it worse when you have some flashes doing some great things. You have the guy cut open early. You're thinking, okay, this is going my way. And then to lose it, it's disappointing. Good refereeing from Glenn. A great fight for both Trevor Loken and in victory, Bezad Usmanov. Here's Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Andrew Glenn, steps in, calling a stop to this fight at 24 seconds into round number three. For your winner, by TKO, Besson, the Lion, Usmanov. Usmanov just improving much in that fight. You could just tell he understands the, the range, the tempo, everything a little bit more. And this guy could be a, a problem for a lot of people in this weight class. Trevor Loken most definitely had his moments. He is still a fighter to watch at BKFC. And Bezad Usmanov, most definitely a fighter to watch at BKFC. The fighter from Tajikistan by way of New Mexico. Turning up the pressure. The finish relentless. Intelligence, precision, and technique to the win. Victorious by way of third round TKO. Bezad Usmanov defeats Trevor Loken. Welcome to the new BKFC app. Get monthly BKFC events for $7.99. People that are missing it are missing out big time. Enjoy our all-new library of content, including behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live bare-knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, only $7.99 per month. Tonight only, you'll receive 20% off all Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship apparel when you use the promo code BKFC52 at BareKnuckleShop.com. There's a huge selection of hats, t-shirts, hoodies, and more to choose from with sizes and styles for everyone. So place your order now at BareKnuckleShop.com. And again, a reminder, you can use promo code BKFC52 at checkout to get 20% off BKFC apparel. So knuckle up and save at bareknuckleshop.com. And welcome back here to the Colonial Life Arena here in Columbia, South Carolina, as we just had a part burner to kick things off with our free view. And right now in the free view, you're locked in, but you might not have the pay-per-view yet. We can make that happen. Just get the BKFC app, $7.99. That means you're going to get the incredible full card, the main card, the co-main event, Soto and Kareem. We're going to get the championship main event with Barnett and Richardson. A lot to be excited about. That's the BKFC app, $7.99. Get it right now. You don't want to miss what we have later on tonight, a fully stacked card. And speaking of fully stacked, folks, November 4th, BKFC Thailand. Bangkok once again, and it's going to be an incredible card. And not only are we going to have a lot of great Thai fighters on the card, we have something extremely special. Wu Kao, Sen Chai, anybody that is just kind of familiar with combat sports and especially Muay Thai, then you know these two gentlemen. They are going to meet in our squared circle. It is going to be bare knuckle, Thailand rules, and it's very special. Let's take a look at what you can expect from BKFC Thailand.
So many people are asking, what is bare knuckle tie? Bare knuckle tie is a new innovation in combat sports brought to you by Bare Knuckle Fighting Championships. So the rules are based on traditional Muay Thai, but with a bare knuckle twist. Bare knuckle tie rules are as follows. Fighters compete in a BKFC squared circle. Fighters obviously compete bare knuckle. Fights are scheduled for five two minute rounds, exactly the same as BKFC rules currently. There's one minute interval between each round. It is vital that we determine a winner. So in the case of a draw after five rounds, we will go into a sudden death round. This fight will continue! During the fight, fighters are allowed to kick. Fighters can punch. Fighters can use elbow strikes. Fighters can also use knee strikes. Spinning attacks are allowed. Fighters can use the clinch, but only with the intention of attacking. The clinch is only permitted for three seconds. Sweeps and throws are not allowed. Stalling of the action is not allowed. Strikes to the back of the head or the spine are not allowed. Each match includes one referee and three judges. Fights will be scored on the 10 point must system. There is no three knockdown rule. Fighters cannot be saved by the bell in any round. So we have created this new fighting style to be fast, furious, and we guarantee non-stop action. แต่จริงๆแล้ว BKFC ทำให้มันเกิดขึ้นได้แล้วตอนนี้ผมก็เลยทำให้เราเรารู้สึกโอ้โหมันเป็นอะไรที่แบบสุดยอดของโลกจริงๆมันมีความหมายมากนะครับสำหรับที่เราได้ไปทากันกับกับตำนานนะครับสุดยอดของมวยไทยสุดยอดของนักสู้ชื่อของผมไอ้ชมพัวขาวทุกคนที่ทุกคนรู้จักแต่พอเป็นนักมวยอาชีพนักมวยที่มีความชำนาญพอขึ้นไปบนเวทีเนี่ยเขาจะไม่มีความที่
So many people are asking, what is Bare Knuckle Thai? Bare Knuckle Thai is a new innovation in combat sports brought to you by Bare Knuckle Fighting Championships. So the rules are based on traditional Muay Thai, but with a bare knuckle twist. Bare knuckle Thai rules are as follows. Fighters compete in a BKFC squared circle. Fighters obviously compete bare knuckle. Fights are scheduled for five two minute rounds, exactly the same as BKFC rules currently. There's one minute interval between each round. It is vital that we determine a winner. So in the case of a draw after five rounds, we will go into a sudden death round. This fight will continue! During the fight, fighters are allowed to kick. Fighters can punch. Fighters can use elbow strikes. Fighters can also use knee strikes. Spinning attacks are allowed. Fighters can use the clinch, but only with the intention of attacking. The clinch is only permitted for three seconds. Sweeps and throws are not allowed. Stalling of the action is not allowed. Strikes to the back of the head or the spine are not allowed. Each match includes one referee and three judges. Fights will be scored on the 10 point must system. There is no three knockdown rule. Fighters cannot be saved by the bell in any round. So we have created this new fighting style to be fast, furious, and we guarantee non-stop action. Welcome to the new BKFC app. Get monthly BKFC events for $7.99. People that are missing it are missing out big time. Enjoy our all-new library of content, including behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live bare-knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, only $7.99 per month. We are all the way live from Satellite 5. I'm Brian Socia, and as always, so much to get into this week on the Bare Knuckles Show. We're glad you're hanging out. Bare Knuckle just takes one shot. If he can land a good shot, he can do some damage. Six new major signings, a new location overseas that we're going to be doing. It gives me so much more energy and reason to go ahead and do what I do. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, it's inappropriate. <laughs> Light heavyweights for you now. The numbers presented by Crescent Tools for Michael Lale versus Daniel Cooper. Okay, Sean, you can see here, everything very similar. Only thing different, right? You do have a little bit of height advantage for Cooper. However, I'm not sure if that is even an advantage. I feel like the shorter guy has the advantage there. They can throw those overhand, those looping shots, and they can land. It's harder for a taller guy to land those that goes over the top. So I would give that advantage to, to uh, Nile there. Daniel Cooper. Set for his bare knuckle fighting championship debut. He's had five pro MMA bouts, two in pro Muay Thai. At our fighter meeting, Cooper told us, I'm normally a very aggressive fighter in MMA and in Muay Thai, but in this, my BKFC debut, I'm really trying hard to be a patient fighter. My coaches want me to be a patient fighter. With that said, Cooper also told us, I like to move a lot. But in this, my BKFC debut, I want to be more stationary. Patient, stationary, so I can load up, be accurate with full power. Yeah, he said he loves to brawl. He would love to turn us into a brawl, but he doesn't need to. He shouldn't do that. He understands that. He talks about wanting to be stationary and throw with power. He feels like it's important to wait for the right time, wait for your openings, and then explode in. Cooper told us as he's been watching BKFC, he said, I don't really see people framing out of the clinch. If I'm in the clinch, I'm going to frame out, and when I frame out, then I will throw hard shots. Cooper said, I really believe in my legitimate knockout power. He understands he needs to be leery of this clinch right there. He's not super familiar with it, so he doesn't want to get in the clinch. He wants to get out, stay long, get in there and throw those power shots.
Michael Lale set for his BKFC debut. He's had two pro boxing bouts, one in pro MMA, 18 AMI MMA bouts. At our fighter meeting, Lale told us just the opposite of Daniel Cooper. As Cooper said, I'm normally a mover, I want to be more stationary. Lale said, throughout my career, I've been pretty stationary. Now in this, my BKFC debut, I want to move. Lale said, I'm normally very much heavy on my front foot. I'm now trying to be able to move an angle off of my back foot. You can tell he's studied a lot and understood that once the, you know, understands footing, footwork. He's really worked on that. Feels like he's training with a great team right now. He's had some time off and he feels like he's really grown as a fighter. He's ready to come in here, utilize that better head movement, sit down on his punches and throw hard. 20 fighters on this card, so 20 fighter meetings. And we give Michael Lale the quote of the week. He said, my opponent Daniel Cooper is a brute, but well then I'm a brute as well. <laughs> feels like he really needs to stay focused on his opponent doesn't want to focus on the event the crowd the size the magnitude of what's going on if he focuses on just his opponent he's gonna have a good night back we go to jeff houston ladies and gentlemen we are set for the next fight of the night scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the light heavyweight division presented to you by Crescent Tools. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight he wears black and white. He stands six feet, one inch tall. His official weight, 185.4 pounds. He holds a combined combat sports record of seven fights and tonight makes his BKFC debut. Fighting out of Columbus, Georgia. Here is Daniel Super Cooper. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears blue and black. He stands 5 feet 10 inches tall. His official weight, 184 and 1 half pounds. He holds a combined combat sports record of three fights. And tonight makes his BKFC debut. Fighting out of Conover, North Carolina. Here is Micah, the machine Lay referee in charge of the action, Jason Collins. Michael Lale told back us, back up, I have up, to guys. get inside with good footwork. I cannot right, reach, I cannot overextend. Jason back Collins back calling both fighters up to scratch. All right, guys, knuckle up. Call of knuckle up from Collins, round number one. Blue trunks for Michael Lale, black trunks for Daniel Cooper. The jab. With pressure immediately right on his feet, just like he told us he wanted to be as Michael Lale. You can already see the contrasting styles right here. Lale going to come through, put the pressure on. And right hand on the exit, last sequence from Daniel Cooper. You can tell looking to counter. It's in the step now of Daniel Cooper. Cooper backing out, circling up. Forward pressure again from Michael Lale, trying to mirror the hips. Good explosion to the inside comes Daniel Cooper. Cooper, big uppercuts, uppercuts right back with the right hand by Lale. On the overhook, right, active Stop. clinch. Break. Now the call of break from referee Jason Collins. Turn. Turn. Referee Turn. from Turn. Collins. Turn. Both fighters to throw to the head and body in that active clinch. Stalking pressure again from Michael Lale. Lale off the jab, left hand, big right hand. Counter left hand again on the overhook. Now goes Daniel Cooper to the body. Short right hand, right hand again from Lale. Driving pressure forward from Daniel Cooper in this clinch from the overhook. Like you said earlier, John, the referee doing a great job of letting these guys work in there. Spear of blood on the floor to Michael Lale. 40 seconds remaining, round number one of this light heavyweight bout. This tempo feels more like a featherweight bout. Forward pressure from Cooper. Lale undaunted coming forward again. His back foot is Cooper looking to explode in. Big left hand. Right hand ducking his head, Lale landed to the body goes Cooper. Big shots now from Daniel Cooper on the overhook again. You can tell Lale that bothered him getting hit his eyes. Something happened right there. He was not handling that very well for a second. Smear of blood under the left eye now, Michael Lale. 
to go along with the smear of blood on his forehead that opened up earlier in round number one. Driving Stop. pressure from Lyle Cooper, countering against the ropes as we end round number one. And Sean, you talked about the pace right there. Not not much like a light heavyweight, but more of a lighter weight. Let's see. We that could be in. some problems for Lyle because he, he's got a little bit of an inside. inactive period. Breathe. Okay. We don't want to rush. Once we put that, wait, once we put that pressure, I don't want to rush you. I got really got him in the ropes. Set him up now. Set him up. He's going straight back. He's bouncing on his punches. I want you to see that. Okay? Work out of your jab. Work out of your jab. Good? All right. Water? All right. Catching him clean. Yeah, but just don't run in. You're running in, baby. He's waiting for you. Scan yeah. the QR code. Also go online to bkfc.com. Go to the BKFC app. Is your way to watch tonight's main card in which you will see our main event and you will see that man Reggie Barnett Jr. back of the house only fans gives you exclusive look at the champion Reggie Barnett Jr. looking to successfully defend his BKFC 135 pound strap as he faces Keith Richardson Taylor Starling behind him Richardson 34 pro MMA bouts enters our main event 3-0 in bare knuckle fighting championship Card begins top of the hour. The prelims continue round number two. Fast start off of scratch round number two for Daniel Cooper, putting Lales back against the ropes. Overwork for Michael Lale. Separation from Jason Collins. You feel like Cooper right there, he felt like he had his opponent hurt at the end of the last round. He wants to jump right back on him. To the clinch again. Both fighters very active in the clinch. Cooper talked to us about framing out of the clinch. We haven't seen any framing from Cooper. What we've seen is a barrage of punches. So why frame out when I can punch this guy? To the clinch again. Underhook now from Cooper. Good driving pressure from Cooper, putting Michael Lales back against the ropes. And look at this. Both guys very accurate with their clinch right here. 96% to 84. Both guys doing a lot of good work in there. So Collins keeping this fight moving, and now Collins calls time. This will be a medical timeout. Dr. Don Muzi, Chief Medical Officer of BKFC. Hopefully that's not in a place where they think the blood's going to get in his eye too much and they can let the fight keep going. There we go. This fight will continue. Dr. Muzi, in conjunction with the outstanding ringside cage side physicians here supplied by the South Carolina Commission. 105 remaining round number two. And Sean, you hear the crowd just fired up for the fighters right now. Wanting this fight to continue. And it's a great one. And fighters continuing to find success, landing body and head in the clinch. In the center circle. Forward pressure now for Michael Lale. Cooper's done a really good job moving backwards, exploding forward. Lale's done a really good job of just exploding forward off the front foot. But he's not been heavy on the front foot as he told us he's worked hard to do. From the back foot in the right hand lands Michael Lale. Cooper doing a good job of laying that jab, and that's doing a lot of damage. Forward pressure again, off the jab into the clinch goes Lale. Cooper on the underhook. Cooper's been really effective, Chris, with the underhooks and the overhooks. You wouldn't think this was his first bare knuckle fight. He seems very comfortable out there. Lale on the right hand entry. Now on the counter shot. Half time club snatched by Cooper. Lale to the body. I feel like Lale has a sense of urgency right now with the cuts. That ends round number two. Sean, this is a great free view we're having right now. Both <laughs> these fights have been fantastic. Cut man extraordinaire, Pat McPherson. Going to work under that left eye of Michael Lale. Sorry. Breathe. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on. All right. What you want, one, two? Just lead with the two. Lead with the two. To the head, to the body you want. Go to the head first. And if it don't work, go to the body. The head. All you're going to have to do is catch him one or two. He busted all up. All right, Come breathe, on, breathe in, look, Kurt, Kurt is your way, well, baby, breathe, 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 blow it out. And here, breathe. he's showing some of the inside work, good right hand, good left hand, uh, Cooper right there. These guys are really doing some good inside work. Hard right hand, but I mean, Cooper just walked right through it. These guys are both tough as nails. And I like what Cooper's coach is saying right there. He's saying that right hand lead. They feel that he is much faster than his opponent. If you're going to do that right hand lead, you better be faster. It's an every now and again punch. You can't throw it consistently or you're going to get caught. All right, the line, Red. the line, Blue. Set for round number three. All right, guys, double up. 
Forward pressure off of scratch immediately for Michael Lale, and there's the counter exploding in for Daniel Cooper. That right there, microcosm is the theme of this fight. You see how that's ruled, and that's ruled a slip immediately by Jason Collins. Well, again, off the jab, counter right hand. Between rounds, you heard Cooper's corner calling for that too. There was the two right there. To the clinch, left hand. And uh, another good percentage. These are just total strikes. Both guys landed 82 and 62. These guys are going at it. Good right hook to the body, right hook to the head from Cooper. I love what Cooper did there. He threw the body and then right to the head. Beautiful work. For driving pressure again on the overhook from Daniel Cooper. Lael continuing the throw to the body. These two fighters have been tireless in the clinch. Separation again from Jason Collins. Come here, sir. Sir. Go for look. Fighters in the center circle. Lale coming forward in the center circle. Left hook from Cooper. Lale walked through it. 55 seconds remaining. Round number three. On the level change from Daniel Cooper. Straight one, two, straight two. Right back from Cooper after Lale landed. Which again on the underhook. Left to the body from Michael Lale. Lale just coming straight forward the entire time. He's got to be careful with that. He's going to get counted. Nice jab from Cooper. Lale walked right into that punch and indeed walked right through that punch. Cooper keeps looking over here in his corner. You can see we got Lorenzo Hunt over there. You got to be careful just watching the corner too much of that's going. On the right hand, left hand. Shuts to the body now for Cooper into the clinch. Hard overhook snatched by Lale. Closing seconds, round number three. On the reset, forward again is Michael Lale. There is the bell. We move to round four. And although Lale's face is a bloody mess right now, I mean, Cooper's looking really tired at this point. It might be we that forward pressure here. the entire hey, time from Lale. We won this round. After a few cleans, he's done. Eh? Feign that jab, jab, jab two, jab, jab two, three. I need you to put two, three punches together. He's right there. The only reason we cannot connect because we finish it on top of him. You go, take him over with the uppercut. I can throw my jab and he's gonna leave, put his head down there. I can throw the uppercut. One or two punches, this motherfucker's still good. All right, breathe. Breathe. Let's get this shit out of here. Get him out of here. All right. He's tough motherfucker. Let's get him out of here. Yeah, sure. <laughs> All right. Look. The breath, blow out. Sean, I really felt down and blow out. Stretch about that last round right there. Felt like right Cooper was really slowing down. He's gonna have to really pull together right now because Lale is coming right now. He's coming forward the entire time, pushing the pace. All right, gentlemen. Cooper might want to get on his bike or land some hard shots. One to two. Round number four underway. Lale coming forward. There's the right hand. Counter right hand. Another right hand on the inside from Cooper. Lale took those punches exceedingly well. Cooper keeps looking down at his right hand. We're on this step in jab. A reaction from this Columbia, South Carolina crowd. And look at just that forward pressure the entire time from Lale coming straight forward. Lale on the overhook. Buckle up! Lale continuing to come forward as he's done throughout this fight. Good head movement from Daniel Cooper. Good jab from Daniel Cooper. Cooper on his back foot, circling out. Some heavy breathing, though, on the back pedal, on the circling up from Cooper. 70 seconds remaining, round number four. On the right hand, good left hand on the entry from Lale. Underhook from Daniel Cooper. Cooper to the body. Left uppercut to the sternum from Michael Lale. Lale again to the body with the left hand. And Sean, that inside fighting is so grueling, so tiring right there. It's really sad. The overhook now from Daniel Cooper. Separation from referee Jason Collins. 45 seconds remaining, round four. You see the heavy breathing on the outside from Cooper. Cooper now holding center circle. Lale resetting, coming forward once more. 30 seconds remaining in the fourth round. Cooper's mouth is wide open. Another sign of his exhaustion right there. Gotta keep that mouth closed. You don't want to get hit and get your jaw broken. Okay. This has been a high-paced, light heavyweight fight. Nothing decided yet. 
Very even to this point between Michael Lale and Daniel Cooper. Hard overhook snatched again by Cooper. The fighter's looking to land one more shot before the bell. More than that from Cooper. Lands the flurry to the head. We move to the fifth and final round. Sean, I know it doesn't seem like it. Only two minutes, people think. You can do anything for two minutes. Not so much. When you're in there and you're grinding like that, those inside fighting moments right there that really make you tired. We're good. These guys are exhausted, but they're still fighting. Right, yeah. Blow him out. Look at here, Coop. When he comes in, all you got to do is pop his ass with that right hand. He's going to run right into it. Yes, sir. And then when he shoves up, pop! Oh, slide. Huh? My right hand sliding off. Sliding off? Sliding yeah. off his face? Yeah. So, listen, listen Root, that. Brother. Boom and out. All right. When he's here, you got to throw an uppercut. Yeah. You got to, baby. All right. When he How about looking on the scorecard? You know what? Like you gotta say, get quit taking them free little pop. I love the corner work right there for Cooper. He said my right hand is sliding, just sliding right off his face. I love it. But great advice he said we need to throw the uppercut when your opponent has his head down. I like the uppercut or moving outside and limit the body. One of those two. The KFC founder and CEO David Feldman always tells Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship debuters make an impact. Michael Lale and Daniel Cooper have most definitely made an impact through four rounds. Medical timeout called by referee Jason Collins before we start round number five. I think you're looking at that left eye. It's almost swollen shut right there for Lale. Open his left eye. You see Dr. Don Muzi. He's known this in every event. Chief medical officer of KFC. And an anticlimactic ending to an otherwise phenomenal fight. Medical stoppage TKO and the win for Daniel Cooper. That's so unfortunate, Sean. Those guys were having a great fight right there, but they felt he could not see, I believe, is why they did that. And they're always looking out for the, the safety of the fighter. I have no problem with it. If Don Muzi says the fight needs to be stopped, I believe him. We'll officially go down as two on, minutes of round number tonight. four. I'll fight three times tonight. Round number five did not start. Oh, it ain't now. And that's class from Daniel Cooper. No histrionics in the celebration. He fought extremely well, as did Michael Lale. The medical stoppage, the physician stoppage. And after a first class performance in his BKFC debut, that's a first class reaction to a win by physician stoppage from Daniel Cooper. And, and Sean Cooper was nothing short of phenomenal this whole week. Just happy the entire time. Every time I saw him, he was happy and smiling. Um, I would expect another day. A great attitude. Happy for him. I, I mean, don't like what happened to Larry. I mean, it was a great fight. Both guys showed a lot, a lot in that to me. I'd love to see both these guys fight again. But man, what a performance. See the respect between these two fighters. There was zero animosity entering, and obviously zero animosity exiting. Quality fight. Here is Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen. On the advice of our ringside physician, our referee in charge, Jason Collins steps in, calling a stop to the fight at the conclusion of round number four. For your winner by TKO, Daniel Super Cooper. And Sean, what a debut. A lot of times we have guys their first time in there, and it looks like their first time. That was not the case here. Cooper looked like a seasoned veteran. Daniel Cooper ironically talked about being a mover throughout his career as a pro MMA and Muay Thai fighter wanting to be more stationary in his BKFC debut but Cooper's movement was outstanding from the outside repeatedly exploding in both fighters effective throughout especially in the clinch and the physician stoppage the issue with the eye the winner by way of fourth round TKO Daniel Cooper defeats Michael Lale
Welcome to the new BKFC app. Get monthly BKFC events for $7.99. People that are missing it are missing out big time. Enjoy our all-new library of content, including behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live bare-knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, only $7.99 per month. Folks, coming up in November, what a month it is going to be, a fairly international month all the way through. BKFC November 3rd, it's going to be in Orlando. November 4th in Thailand, Bukau, Senshai, Bulgaria. Yes, making the debut in Europe the 17th and on the 18th. Going to be right back to the UK, Danny Christie and Jared Warren. What an incredible month it'll be. We are hitting everywhere on the globe here at the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. It's about to go down top of the hour to the BKFC app, where you can see this incredible full main card. We'll see you at the top to the BKFC app, where you can see this incredible full main card. We'll see you at the top. Welcome to the new BKFC app. Get monthly BKFC events for $7.99. People that are missing it are missing out big time. Enjoy our all-new library of content, including behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live bare-knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, only $7.99 per month.